Hello, I'm State Senator Royce West. Today I'd like to discuss with you the Community Safety Education Act, legislation designed to define the behavioral expectation of law enforcement and citizens during traffic interactions. More specifically, there's been issues that have arose over the last few years concerning in the interaction between law enforcement and citizens. In many instances, there have been fatalities as a result of this interaction. And so we believed in Texas that to come up with behavior expectations for those types of interactions would be most appropriate towards that particular end. We've assembled a group of stakeholders, law enforcement, civil rights organizations, to come up with what we believe should be a set of behavioral expectations during those interactions. And so those behavior expectations have been set forth in our driver's license manual. So when a person studies for their driver's license test, they will have to cover that content. And yes, you should expect at least one, maybe two questions on the driver's license test to cover that particular content. In addition, we decided to make certain that we embedded in the DNA of the state. The way we have gone about doing that, we've placed it in our school system and requiring, yes, mandating that students between the grades of nine through 12 get that content, that is the behavior expectation, know what their rights are, and know if they want to uh, compliment or either complain about a police officer exactly how you go about doing that. In addition, we have placed that in our driver education courses as well as, as, well as our police academies. The reason for doing this is to make certain that to the best extent possible, everyone is on the same page in terms of what are the behavioral expectations when stopped by a police officer. Here to before, police officers understood what the behavior expectations were, but citizens haven't understood it. And so by making this simple change, we believe that by that we've incorporated into the DNA of our state, and by doing that, that we can make these types of interactions safer for all concerned. This is State Senator Royce West. Thank you. Okay, please, please go faster because I am running late. I will not make I'm go faster. I'm going as fast as I can. Please, just go, go through the light. Just don't let that light okay. turn red. Okay, fine. I think we're getting pulled over. What? What? Are you serious? Yes. Oh, no. Obviously, if I go over the speed oh, limit, we're gonna no. get pulled over. Pastor, Pastor, put your hands on the dash. Pastor, ma'am, Pastor, put your hands, put your hands on, the dash on the dashboard. Thank you. Driver, put your hands on the steering wheel. My name is Deputy Larry Hash, Travis County, Precinct One. The reason why I stopped you is speeding 45 and 35. You have a driver's license proof of insurance, ma'am? Thank you. Sit tight. For a second, I'll be right back with you. be asked to sign a citation. This isn't saying that you agree. It's just saying that you're going to follow up with the court. Now we're going to be issued a citation for us speeding 45 and 35. It's not a mission of guilt, but a promise to occur to court. You saw it right here at the last line, at the bottom line right there. You will get a copy with all the information you need. We receive a notice in the mail. You got 30 days to appeal. Thank you. Hello.
I'm Dr. Penn. The video you just watched is intended to show you what not to do when you're stopped by a police officer. But what is the right thing to do? How should you as a citizen handle the situation? We've asked a cross section of high school students and ordinary citizens to help us out by asking some of the typical questions that you might have about the right way to handle yourself if and when you get pulled over. Let's get right to it. What does the officer expect to see when he approaches our car? Officers don't always have a clear view into your vehicle. Keep your hands visible, don't move around, don't reach for anything. For example, you can place your hand on the steering wheel in the 10 and the 2 position. That makes sense. Take a deep breath, breathe, relax, wait for the officer to approach, and he'll give you further instructions. If it's dark, Turn the overhead light on. Why does the officer tell us to roll down our windows? What's that all about? On a traffic stop, the officer may ask you to roll down your windows for his or her own safety. Under certain circumstances, when there's not a great deal of illumination or when the windows have a tint, the officer may require you to roll down the windows to identify anybody who may be in the backseat. What happens if I don't want to show you my driver's license or tell you who I am? If you refuse to show your driver's license to an officer when he stops you on a traffic stop, the officer can arrest you for refusing to show your driver's license. And under certain circumstances, if probable cause exists, the officer may also require the passengers to identify themselves. What happens if I don't have my driver's license with me? Uh, will I be arrested? What if I just forgot it at home? An officer can usually verify that you have a license once he obtains basic information from you. Depending on local law, you may be arrested, but most likely you will only get a citation. Do I have to get out of my car? I'm not a criminal. Most of the time, an officer will actually get out of the vehicle for safety. You will be amazed how many times an officer and or his vehicle are struck by another driver while conducting a traffic stop. If the officer asks you to get out of the vehicle, it's for your safety and also for his. Put it this way, nobody wants to be standing six inches from the highway with their back to traffic. What if I'm a passenger in a stopped car? Can I ask questions? Many times passengers want to get involved with what's going on. Generally, we're only going to speak with the driver unless a passenger has done something wrong. The officer should only conduct business with the driver. It's up to the driver to pass on the information to the passenger. Is forgetting to use my signal or going a few miles over the speed limit really a big deal? Traffic law is all about everyone's safety. Most of the time, officers look for traffic violations in areas where there have been accidents, citizen complaints about traffic, or areas known to be dangerous like construction zones, narrow streets, hills, blind curves, that sort of thing. When an officer makes a traffic stop, it is about getting people to drive safer. So sometimes, yes, not using that signal can be a big issue. Think about the last time someone didn't signal and cut you off. Why should I sign a ticket? I don't want to look like I agree with it. Look at the ticket as a personal recognizance bond. You're signing it to say you will contact the court so you can be released to go on your way. If you don't sign the ticket, then you can be arrested and taken to see the magistrate at the jail. Okay, so I signed the ticket. What happens next? The law says you have to be given at least 10 days to contact the court to state what you plan on doing. At this point, you have options you can discuss with the court. You can ask to go to trial and have a judge decide your case. Some courts allow you to plead no contest and take defensive driving courses to then have the ticket dismissed. Or you can just pay the fine. If you don't have the money right away, almost every court will work with you to set up a payment plan. There are other options that you may have that vary court by court. The big thing is to ask and be sure to do it before the time set on your citation. What if I think the officer acted inappropriately or was rude or didn't have a reason to stop me? Hey, if you think the officer acted inappropriately, was rude, or didn't have a reason to stop you, remember, you can take it to court. A court will have the final say on whether or not you violated the law. If it's about the officer's behavior or treatment, please contact that officer's employing agency. They have investigators that will contact you and they will thoroughly investigate the complaint. 
Don't forget that most officers in this state and even across the country now have either in-car cameras with audio or on-body-worn cameras with audio. So that will be the beginning point of the investigation. After the department investigates your concern or complaint, they will contact you, let you know what the results were, what their findings were, and let you know what action, if any, was taken. Do I have to let an officer search me or my car? You have the right to deny a consent search of your car, and even if you say yes, you can change your mind at any time. A consent search means that the officer is asking you for permission to search your car. However, if the officer has probable cause to search, they not need consent. As far as a person, an officer can frisk a car. For example, if you are asked to get out, the officer can look inside before you get back in to see if there is a weapon within reach of the driver. So now you have a better idea of how to handle the situation. Let's wrap things up and take another look at our traffic stop and how it could have turned out better. We had pizza yesterday. No hamburgers because I don't eat red meat. That's right. Got a non-meat eater over here. What about snappy salads? Ooh, snappy salads. Yeah, we had Talking my language now. I haven't been there in a long time. What you gonna get? Salmon on it. Yes, ma'am. Make my own half snap. Mm -hmm. Salmon. Mm -hmm. Hey, this man have brake lights on? It doesn't look like it. I didn't see brake lights on that one. So, you're getting pulled over. Don't panic. It happens. Put on your signal and look for a safe place to pull off the road. Bravo 742 traffic. It's going to be Texas Tech, George King 430 Lincoln, occupied. One if you can get into a parking lot, four. great. Put your car in park. windows. Turn off your engine. Keep your hands on the steering wheel and wait for the officer. You will be asked to show your driver's license and insurance. Good evening, sir. Good evening, officer. Officer Operas, Dallas Police Department. You're being stopped today because your brake lights are out. Is there any reason your brake lights are out this evening? No, sir. I didn't realize it was out. Uh, may I see your driver's license and proof? Do what the officer asks. If you have to reach into your console, let him know you're about to do it. They're in my console. Let me grab them. Okay, go ahead. Here you go, officer. Thank you, sir. I'll be right back with you, okay, sir? Yes, sir. The officer may ask you to get out the car. Just follow the instructions. Stand where you're asked. It will be the safest place. Stay out of the car until you're told to get back in. So where are you coming from tonight? I'm coming from class. I had an exam today. What kind of exam? I had a history exam. History exam. Yes. How did you do? I think I did pretty well. We're not. We will not find out until tomorrow. Oh. Well, good luck. Yeah. Thank you. I, I appreciate it. Hope you did it. well also. I hope I did too. I wasn't How's... very good in history. No. No. What's your favorite subject? Math. Math. Not really that smart for math, but <laughs> hopefully you get math a lot more than what I do. Wait for the officer to tell you it's okay to leave. All right, sir. Here's your driver's license and insurance back. Thank you, sir. Okay, you're all set. Uh, just a warning for the brake lights. You're free to go. Thank you, sir. Drive safe. Thank you. You have a great night. You too. Have a good night. You have a great night, ma'am. Thank you. Look for a safe spot to leave. Usually the officer will wait for you to leave first. On behalf of all the state and local partners that brought you this training video, thank you for watching. And safe travels across the great state of Texas. We just, we just wanted to keep everyone safe and get to our home at the end of the day.